I was five years old, I said to my dad I wanted to become a software engineer. Yes, I didn't say medical doctor, because at that time, that's what is kind of common. As a practicing um, engineer, he got interested in me saying I wanted to become a medical doctor, because he wasn't expecting it from me. All he has been thinking about is, one of, one of his children, the son, would take after him. My journey as a tech woman has been full of so many adventures and a lot of risks as well. So I took one of my risks sometimes in 2015, when I went to a school in Lagos, Nigeria, to take them down on the water via virtual reality. Okay, what would they do that it was? I, I went to the school with some software and, a v, and VR cardboard to show them what happens underwater. I just went into the classroom and told them, guys, today we are doing aquatic animals. Get your cardboards and let's go. So what happened was that I don't have to explain too much what I was going to teach them that day. So they just picked out their cardboards and dived into it with me. They were the ones telling me what they saw underwater. They were the ones saying, wow, I saw sharks, starfishes. So I, I didn't have to explain all that to them. So for me, it simplified education, how to explain things to kids in the classroom. The second one happened at a school in Port Arcot, Nigeria. What happened there was that a couple of students were, were shown how to use their mobile phones to, to turn uh, into a projector. For example, if you are in a local school and there's no projector to project organism, for example, in biology class, you could, a, there are ways you could turn your mobile phone into a projector that the student will be able to see the organism, maybe amoeba, paramecium, change shape and size in real time. The third one was at um, IDP settlements still here in Lagos, Nigeria. I went there, I wanted to teach them. Of course, because of the Boko Haram insurgency, they bled out of school for a very long time. And when they got to Lagos, they, they couldn't find teachers that speak their language, which is Hausa language. And this is something that I have passion for, to go there to teach them. So what did I do? I took my cardboard again to the IDP settlement without understanding their language, but I still wanted to impact knowledge. So what I did was give them the cardboards and say, guys, um, even if they don't understand, but I just you know, kind of explained to them that today we are going to be going to, to the space to identify planetary bodies. So I just gave them the cardboard, they looked at it, I asked them to put it on their faces. So they were the ones telling me what um, the moon is in Aosa, what the stars are in Aosa, what the Saturn is in Aosa. So at that point I learned that another thing VR could do is break language barrier in education. I wouldn't have been able to impact knowledge into them if I couldn't get another way around speaking Aosa. So um, that happened and it was a success. So, of course, some people could say um, there's nothing, there's no big deal in virtual reality. It's been used everywhere in the world. Of course, I agree with the person that said um, there's nothing new under the sun, right? I agree, but I quoted um, this part of it for myself that says even if there's nothing new uh, under the sun, Nigeria is kind of a sun for me, so I could create something new under my own sun. Thank you.